Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through my process of Fenway learning an automatic leave it. This is our very first training session and I'll take you all the way through where have we have gotten up to with it. So I would recommend with this one, if you want to use it to teach a leave it cue, um, I'm going to explain how to do that later in this video. Early on, this is something for my puppy that I actually want to teach to teach him to leave alone dropped food or dropped items around the house. Wrigley's really good at that and that's a skill that I really want him to learn as well. So for me the leave it cue is not something that's super important but I do talk about how to add it later on in this video. Okay so what I'm doing initially is I first and foremost have two different value treats on me. The treat that I am showing him as like the leave it treat that's in my hand is actually just a piece of his kibble. It's a lower value treat and then the treat that I'm giving to him is a higher value treat. So in exchange for leaving the lower value treat alone he gets a higher value treat in return. What I am doing initially is I initially had my hand closed around the lower value treat and then presented that to his nose, waited for him him to disengage his attention from that hand, clicked in that moment, and then delivered the treat in front of his paws right there. I quickly transitioned this one to having the food on the floor because Fen is really not excited about his kibble. <laughs> As I, I've switched him recently to a different kibble, but this kibble in particular he's not stoked about. So I knew that transitioning to the food on the floor was going to be an easy one for him, but I would work your way up slowly to this one. If your puppy gets up or if your adult dog gets up to get that food that's on the floor, I would immediately cover it with your hand again. Click and feed when they disengage. I also am increasing my expectations with Fen here to actually see if he can not only not go for the treat on the ground, but also give me a little bit of focus too. So right here in this next one, you're actually going to see Fen stand up right there. I, instead of lifting my hand off of that tree, I'm going to keep it covered, knowing that if I removed my hand, he probably would have gone for it. And then on the next repetition, I'm taking again another step back, waiting for him to actually just look away from my hand. And that's when I'm clicking and feeding. So this right here is why I wouldn't recommend practicing with something like Advil. We are going to make mistakes. This was a mistake on my part. I was pretty certain he wasn't going to go and eat that piece of kibble because he's not wild about it, but he definitely did. Um, ideally in that situation, you would have went to go cover that with your hand or your foot and removed it, but it's okay. It's okay if your puppy or your dog gets one of the leave it treats whenever you're practicing this. And as a note as well, I think that I like to teach it this way in saying for the things like Advil or um, something else that you might drop on the ground that is not safe for your dog to have, I like to teach just an automatic, like you just don't get to engage with that food rather than leave it for a couple seconds, then you get to go have it. I think that's a little bit unfair to teach when it comes to things like Advil later on that we're never going to allow our dogs to actually have. So I like to teach it from the start, the leave it item whatever it might be, here it's a piece of kibble, is always off limits.
Ben free. Good boy. So now that Fen has the basics of this down, that's where I actually start to add in a lot of praise and encouragement when he does the right thing that I want him to do. It would confuse him initially if I added a lot of feedback in because he didn't have an idea of what we were going for initially. But now that he clearly understands what we're what we're working on here, adding verbal feedback and praise for a dog like Fen is really helpful and can be helpful for your dogs at home too. Talk to your dogs and tell them they did a good job. Okay, so a new day, new training session, setting it up in the exact same way. I'm seeing if Fen remembers basically what we had worked on the previous day um, with that one higher value treat that he's getting in return for leaving the lower value treat alone. This is something that I advanced with pretty quickly in this training session with him, and I actually started to advance to having the treat on the ground not be a piece of his kibble and actually be another treat to actually make it more enticing for him. Um, the treat that he was getting in return was still higher value to him. So let's say initially I use a lower value kibble as my leave it treat, and then I'm rewarding him with a Zook's treat, let's say. Now I'm advancing to, I actually have these crunchy treats that he ended up liking more than the Zook's treat. So I, I now have two medium value treats. The one that I'm putting on the ground is a little bit more enticing, a little bit harder to leave alone. And that's something that we can work with as we're working with this leave it exercise as well. Um, I would still recommend having the higher value of those medium value treats be the one that you reward your dog with. You definitely don't want to reward them with what they see as the lower value of those treats so just keep that in mind And whenever we change something in our training plan, especially if we make the leave it treat higher value, we might have to take a couple steps back. So I moved back a couple paces from where we uh, got to yesterday in our session to, again, having the food in my hand and just requiring him to look away from it for a moment and then tossing that food out. So that's something just to keep in mind is you may have to take a couple steps back in your training plan to adjust for that.
leave it. Leave it. So here I'm starting to introduce the leave it cue now that I'm getting that more reliable turn away from the treat on the ground behavior again. So I am actually saying the leave it cue as Fen is about to turn his head away. So I compare those two behaviors together. Here, pairing the word right as the behavior that you want is happening is helping to actually teach your dog what that cue means. Later on in training though, once he has heard this word many times before, that's when I'm going to start to say leave it up front whenever I actually place the treat on the ground and then expect that head turn away. So there's kind of a difference in how I'm presenting the cue with this one. So this was after two training sessions is where I got to with it, probably about, I don't know, 15 minutes each. And this is kind of what we have. So this is definitely something I'll be continuing with Fen and upping the value and um, just differentiation of items that I'm dropping on the ground as well to generalize that behavior for him. Um, and I will also be sure to film that and probably make a part two to this video. Wrigley also got a turn after he was done training. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys. This was my, I filmed my process of teaching this to him. You guys are seeing everything that he learned in these two training sessions. So we're planning on continuing with it and see where it goes, but he's getting the hang of it. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys.